12 years ago. Um, they, Derek Daly and Dina, Dina is a, um, she was a social worker, but now she is the director of social services in Caroline County. And her husband, Derek, is uh, the general controller at Orion Safety Products. So they wanted to give back to their community because they felt like they had been blessed. So they wanted to get, give uh, maybe book scholarships to some students, African-American students who wanted to go off to college. Well, when they looked in Easton, they didn't find hardly any, maybe a couple of girls, but not hardly any. They looked in St. Michael's and I think it was still less. So they were concerned about, well, what's going on with our African-American males? Why aren't they continuing their education? What's, what's going on? And so um, they got a group of friends and interested people together and talked about it. We were called the think tank. So I was part of that. And we just kind of talked about, um, you know, what's going on? What's the re what is the reason that our African-American males are dropping out of school or not pursuing a higher education, you know, are not being successful as they should be? So um, after getting, like I said, all these individuals to come together and talk about it, we decided that we needed to really just change the thinking of our young males from almost the ground up. You know, I'm a Christian, I'm spiritual, so I have to look at the whole gamut. I'm not just looking at, you know, um, academics and um, socialization, but the spiritual aspect, I think we have to take all that into consideration. I think, um, and a lot of times people will say, well, you know, you can't just look back and think about what happened in the past and stay in the past. Well, you can't, but you have to, in order to go forward, you have to know where you came. I love integration. I think it works. But I think when we were segregated, kind of, we really encouraged one another. Our black teachers would not let those kids, you know, fail. No, I'm going home with you, whatever it takes. You're going to stay here later to get this education. No, you're not going to fall through the gaps. But I think in today's society, and because of what teachers are held accountable for, if you don't get it, you're passed on. And it's like you can't really fail. And if they don't have that support system at home, because many are working hard or many are caught up in their own thing, you know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of our kids are left to fend for themselves and are growing up on their own, I believe. I think uh, men, particularly African-American men, have to invest more in our boys because we even see it in our program. The fact that, I mean, they see women all the time. They are with their mothers most of the time. They see, you know, female teachers all the time. But when Derek comes in or when other men come in, it's like, oh, there's a difference. Yeah. They sit up, they listen. It's just, and I think that's what has been missing for a while. First grade, um, our first group started, um, like I said, in first grade, and we follow them through the course of their school age. So that first group is actually in the 11th grade this year. So tutoring them in math and reading um, at first. And then we felt like we had to add the homework piece because a lot of the parents weren't able to help with the homework. Well, some of the math is hard for everybody to understand nowadays. Yeah. Like some of our fifth graders are doing well um, academically but they need that social piece more than ever. Just, just um, learning how to respect themselves and respect others, um, knowing um, what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. You know, um, some of them get the academics, but they still don't have enough confidence. You know, so just working on those and exposing them to different different things going, we go to the, yesterday went to the art academy, so they get to, you know, do um, things like that. They take water safety at the Y. Um, they go on, in the summer we even have trips. A typical day at BAM is that when they get picked up from school, they have a little recess so that they can just kind of get 
all the school stuff out and play with each other. They're so, they're happy and glad to see each other. So they have a little 10 minute recess. And when they come over, we um, have a opening session where all the boys are together and they're sitting with their, their groups or their grades. And we open up with, we have a prayer. We have some of the fifth grade boys leading now where they, um, I made up a pledge. They have a pledge that they say. Um, they also go around and we talk about their day. Everybody, we have like two or three uh, kids from each grade to share how their day went. We, we wanted in the beginning to just share good, what good things happened to you on a day. But now we even add, okay, did anything bad happen today? Because we need to talk about how we can fix it. Um, they also learn, I, I, because we are uh, you know, not government funded, we can do the spiritual thing. So they learn Bible scriptures. They learn to, to memorize. And, and they also learn uh, poetry, some of um, African-American poet. I think because we are, we are one of the constants in their lives, you know, if they can depend on anything besides school, they can depend on Van being there. They can depend on the short listening to them and their tutors as well. Because sometimes it's, it's not all about academics, it's about listening, yeah. you know, sharing with, yeah. like I said, what has happened during the course of the day or what's even going on at home sometimes. I think sometimes people just think it's like a club where the boys just come and um, have a good time and play around, get a little bit of work done, because they don't always get their homework completed. Like I said, because sometimes we just need to talk. Um, like one day, Derek came and he decided um, that he wanted them to know how what they do now, he wanted them to know what was done in the past through our ancestors so that they would know that what they're doing now is not a, a lot of times a good reflection on where our ancestors would want us to be, what they worked for in order to make it so that these boys will have, you know, a lot of the things that they take for granted yeah. now. So I think that was an eye-opening experience for them because the next day they came back and they were like really humble. Because I don't think Sometimes we don't get enough history, especially African-American history. Like that's why I was in tears when I read that. Um, they just don't know what their ancestors went through in order to want an education, in, in order to be successful, in order to want to help their families themselves and not get a handout, you know, or, or live off of welfare. They wanted to do this themselves. And so I, and, and what they went through in order to do it, I think, and, and Derek showed them, you know, he separated them into groups and he said, well, you know, um, you're the black kids and these are white kids over here. And, or, and he just let them know the differences, you know, you could do this and you could do, you can, you know, that's what your ancestors went through, yeah. but they persevered and they, it, they, you know, made a better life for their families so that we could have a better life today.